Hi, love this week, specific heat capacity of water and aluminum. What is specific heat capacity? Well, let's think of it this way. Let's imagine one gram, we're gonna do it by grams, by mass. One gram of water, one gram of aluminum metal. Let's put them side by side. And, let's, and then let's ask the question, how much heat would it take to raise one gram of water by one degree centigrade? So if you were to imagine we're adding heat to that one gram of water and we're measuring the temperature and we stop when the temperature has gone up by one degree centigrade. What we'll have, have obtained is the specific heat capacity of water and we could do the same with aluminum. Take one gram of aluminum, um, start adding heat, record the temperature and see how much heat it takes to go up by one degree centigrade. That would then be the specific heat capacity of aluminum. All right, moving right along. So our objectives for the lab this week is to obtain this specific heat capacity. And we're gonna do it using some, an electrical procedure. So we're gonna add heat electrically. And uh, we'll do that uh, for the, uh, the case of water. The case of aluminum is a little different, so we're going to do it a little differently. All right. What happens when you add heat to water? Of course, we know from everyday experience that when we do so, the temperature rises. And the, 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 the sort of degree or change in temperature depends on the amount of heat you're adding and also the amount of water you have. If you have a lot of water, then the temperature increase won't be as much. And so with that, you can sort of surmise and say, if, my, if I have a certain energy input, then uh, what I need to consider in terms of what's going to happen is the mass and the temperature change. And so I have here, let's see if I can pick up a pen, point options, pen. And so have this fundamental equation that we're going to use, um, at least for this part of the lab, in fact, for both. Energy input is directly proportional to the mass and the temperature change. And then when we write it as an equation, we have to put a proportionality constant, and let's put that proportionality constant as C. So we end up with this fundamental equation, E, uh, energy input is equal to mass times uh, this constant, C times uh, 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 delta T. What's the story about this um, a constant? It turns out that this constant is what we refer to as a specific heat capacity. And so in this case, we are looking for this specific heat capacity. So if we're gonna do it experimentally, then we must know the energy input, the mass and the temperature change, change. And then with that, we can actually solve the equation for this specific heat capacity. So that's what we're gonna do in this lab. So, again, here I guess the same things I've talked about, so I'll skip that. I'm going to the next slide. Yeah, specific heat capacity is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of a given substance by one degree centigrade. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, if we take that fundamental equation and so for C, we end up with uh, uh, the equation shown here. And so we need all the terms on the right hand side so we can then do the arithmetic and end up with a number. <clears throat> so uh, the units of C then will be the units on the right hand side 
Jules Big Brown bed degree centigrade in this case. And C must be determined experimentally. Uh, nature doesn't care about our love for one or anything else, so it must be determined experimentally. And you guys have probably met the fact that uh, water has uh, a specific heat capacity of 4.18 joules per gram per degree centigrade, which is quite high if you compare it uh, to many of the other substances. That's why water is used for cooling purposes and things like that. So how do we determine C at least uh, for water? Well, we're going to use uh, an electrical system, a direct current power supply. So it will supply a voltage through this heating coil down here and a current will flow through. And so this power supply then gives us two important things, namely the voltage and the current. Ah. But what is the voltage? What's this current thing? Well, let's suppose we know the mass. We can determine that. Um, and then uh, through this electrical system, we can, know, we can add a known amount of heat and then measure the uh, change in the temperature. All right. But what's, uh, what's voltage? Um, we, we kind of know you can think of a 1.5 volt battery. What does that mean? It just means that, uh, um, again, um, its amount of energy given per coulomb of charge. So voltage is actually an abbreviation for joules per coulomb, where C is coulomb, a unit of charge. Current? is coulombs per second how much charge is flowing if we multiply voltage times current times time in seconds we end up with energy in joules hmm so our power supply then is going to give us the voltage and the current all right and then if we have some other means of determining the time then we can multiply the three and determine the energy input so here is our setup Here's a power supply, uh, voltage and current here, okay? Uh, the heater head from the power supply, uh, it's called the heater head is in here, now styrofoam cup to keep the heat in, so that all the heat is consumed by the water. Um, and so voltage is here, current is here, right? Voltage and current, how about time? Uh, and temperature. Well, if we put in uh, a temperature sensor hooked to a data logger, then it will measure temperature versus time. And so with that, we'll be able to obtain a delta T from the temperature change and time, um, uh, the change in time for the heating. And so we'll have all the parameters that we need then to actually calculate the specific heat capacity of water. So here's a heating curve. This is one that I obtained a few years ago. Suppose I have water in the styrofoam cup, maybe 40 grams of water. Uh, the heater head in there. I put in a little stir bar so that the solution is ni nicely mixed. And I just turn on the data log at this point. The power supply is off. Uh, it will give me this baseline here. I turn on the, um, the power supply here. It starts heating at about 6 to 10 uh, um, uh, joules per second. The temperature starts to rise. And then after I think, oh, no, okay, the temperature is risen um, by 5 to 7 degrees. That's enough uh, for these measurements. I turn off the power supply. I keep measuring the temperature. Then the temperature stabilizes, uh, stays the same there. And then I have my heating curve that allows me to find what? Well, let's think about it. Let's say this point here is XY, 147 seconds, 28.25 degrees. And this one here is 18 hours starting temperature, to, I mean time, and that's 22.58. You, you know that we were dealing with only the, the, the sloping part, we leave out the flat parts. And so with that, we can find what? We can find the change in the temperature. 
28.25 minus, uh, I mean, 28.25 minus 22.58, and we can change, find the temperature in time as well. And then with that, if we know the mass <coughs> that we put in, uh, the voltage and the current, then we have all the things that we need to actually calculate the specific heat capacity of water. And then more, that's just arithmetic there, voltage times current times time divided by mass of water will give us the specific heat capacity of water, which will be in units of joules for the top, grams in the bottom, and degrees centigrade in this case. All right, from power supply, it just gives where the various things come from, and then you're good, and you can then, then do the arithmetic. And then it's a good idea to, again, keep in mind that we're, we are expecting so, something close to uh, 4.2 joules per gram per degree centigrade. How about for the specific capacity of aluminum? We're going to do this a little different. We're going to take a piece of aluminum. We are going to measure its mass, so we know the mass of aluminum. Then, then we'll take this aluminum and put it in boiling water. Let it sit there for a while until we assure that its temperature is pretty close to 100 or the boiling point of water. Then we'll drop it into a known mass of water that's sitting in a styrofoam cup and measure the temperature change. What's happening here? Well, just of course we, we know that in this case aluminum comes in at a higher temperature and so it gives its heat to the water and it turns out the applicable equation is is this the specific heat capacity of aluminum times the mass of aluminum times uh, the change in temperature for the aluminum so these terms apply to the aluminum aluminum is supplying the heat in this case the heat is being absorbed by the water and then uh, here is the water specific heat capacity of water I'm going to use a literature value in this case 4.18 joules per gram per degree centigrade the mass of water we'll know what that is because we put it in and we'll measure the temperature change and with this equation here, we we'll know all the terms in the equation, and we can solve it for specific heat capacity of aluminum. Uh, this is a case where uh, you say um, uh, heat absorb. So, so this here is giving heat. This one is absorbing heat. And so if you keep the signs consistent, uh, then uh, these two add to zero. You will meet that uh, equation pretty soon um, as Q system plus Q surrounding is equal to zero. So that's our mode then for this. All right, so if we solve the previous equation for C aluminum, the specific heat capacity of water, we end up with the terms on the right hand side here, and we put in all the terms, and then we can solve for the specific heat capacity of aluminum. You want to be careful here, T final is always equal, I mean, delta T is always equal to final minus uh, uh, initial. So if you think of the aluminum, is starting at close to 100 and dropping to somewhere in the 20s or near the 30s. So if you think of delta T there, uh, some of, uh, what, certainly in this case, T final minus uh, T initial, and you think of uh, the water and the aluminum, the signs will actually be different for delta T. And you just need to be aware to enforce delta T as final t final minus initial and deal so some uh, you get negative numbers in certain cases and positive numbers for aluminum so you have something that you sort of have in your head about what to expect the value is uh, about 0.9 joules per gram per degree centigrade so if you compare the two aluminum 0.9 water 4.2 it's like hmm water is so much higher Uh, so again here, um, you boil some water on a hot plate. 
a <clears throat> or Burns and Bennett doesn't matter in this case um, and uh, then remove the aluminum and drop it in a known amount of water 40 grams of water in a dried styrofoam cup you're already recording the temperature and then you drop that in and then uh, record uh, the temperature through the system and with that you'll have a T initial for the water T final for the water uh, T initial will be the, uh, the, the, the boiling point of water for the, for the metal and T final will be whatever the temperature of the water is at the end. So the T finals for the si two systems will actually be the same. And just be careful how you solve the equation and then with that you should be able to obtain the specific heat capacity of aluminum. Uh, we want you to use um, the small temperature sensor in the styrofoam cup, um, a light temperature sensor for the boiling of the water. The reason is the small temperature sensor fries or dies at around 90 degrees, so we don't want to put it in boiling water. Uh, be careful, you'll be using a hot plate or a Benson burner. Oh, it says not a Benson burner in this. Okay. And then just make sure that all the cords are appropriately not touching the hot surfaces. About the um, DC supply, uh, you'll need to play around with it in the beaker first so you get the system working properly. You want the voltage to be roughly between 2 and 3, the current to be 2 and 3, and within that setup, the LED light on the top, there's a red LED light that lights up. If that is red, then you need to play around with the two knobs until it goes off. So again, anything, even if you get 1.9, 2, 3, so anything close to 2, um, you know, limit 3.5, for voltage and the current is ideal to be able to provide enough power to be able to get uh, um, the temperature of the water to increase in a reasonable time. Again, nothing dangerous here, but the rules are we still wear our goggles, goggles in the lab all the time. Be safe, be happy, keep learning. Bye-bye.